Good morning, beautiful souls. So, self-disclosure. One of the things that um, I'm mm, not good at, I'm just going to own it, is um, giving myself a time and showing up, which was one of the reasons that um, next month I'm celebrating 24 years since I quit my day job and um, I live in bliss and it's my devotion to every day bring a little more joy into the world. So let's start first of all by clearing our, um, our aura by inhaling sweet sage into our lungs close up to our heart so that we can share our joy. So here's here's um, here's my sort of mandate for life is that we heal our wounds, our old wounds, that we find our passion and share our joy. That to me is a life lived in bliss. So let's start first of all by doing a clearing. So you can just sit back and I will clear this for you. All right, so just put your hand on your heart. Take a nice deep breath and then draw your essence down into your body from wherever it's been so far today. And I'll cleanse our hands and our heart, oh, thanks for the love. And then our feet, so that we clear our path. All right, and I'm gonna leave this going while we're together so that it continues to do the good work of the plant medicine, sage. And if you don't know about sage, um, go ahead and Google it, <laughs> you know, because Google knows everything. Well, Google knows half of everything. You know the other half. So sage is a beautiful plant medicine. It was used by the natives. Every culture had a cleansing herb, a one that they cleansed their house with, one that they um, that they started ceremony with, which allowed them the act of burning something is alchemical. So when we take sage and we add fire to it, that's the element of earth in the sage and the element of fire with the <laughs> with the um, with the fire right and we turn that into an alchemical process this is magic at its very basic we burn this it becomes the element of air so we have the element of earth adding the element of fire creating the element of air the smoke alchemical process and when you begin your ceremony with that when I begin here uh, my brain automatically goes oh something different is happening so we're training our brain to hook on to that little bit of shift okay have me sip mm. so all along Except for last week when it was my birthday. And um, I had a fabulous time, by the way. Thank you. So for me, the month of June is anticipatory, right? I'm working up to my birthday. And I celebrate it on the 4th of July because there's all those fireworks. And I think it's quite festive. And it's a great way to like wake yourself up all over again. Then for me, the month of July is kind of like basking in the warmth and soaking it all up so that in the month of August, we begin to turn our focus. And I'll show you this in the card today. We begin to turn our focus towards the upcoming, well, I always think about September being the new year. I don't care that, that the calendar says it's in January. In my heart, in my body, it feels like September is that new beginning because we've cultivated something, we've seeded something, and then we've tended to it. So I'm going to take a little moment and digress for a second. Let's look at that word tend, T-E-N-D. 
So we pretend and people say, stop pretending that's not real. But what you're doing then is you're cultivating your intuition and your imagination and you're seeding a little something and then you're feeding it with your imagination. So just like when we plant a seed, we water it, we give it the nourishment it needs. So when you pretend something, you're attending to it ahead of time. It doesn't mean stop doing that. It's just in your imagination and honestly where does everything else start it starts in your imagination it's an idea that becomes a thought and that thought motivates you it pulls you into your heart and you take action on it so this idea becomes a thought which becomes an action and if you do it enough times it's a habit and that habit gets ingrained and we don't even think about where the thought came from so we have this thought that um, we're pretending, we're tending to it ahead of time. So if you start pretending, celebrate that because you are feeding it what it needs to be able to uh, actualize in the world. That's a little bit about this, the first card of the Tarot, the new beginning. If you don't feed your dreams, no one's going to. So use this beautiful time of July to tend to your dreams. And if there's a dream that dropped off a while ago, maybe, you know, a couple of years when this all started, then pull back up that dream. Pull back up that dream. Because next month, I'm celebrating 24 years of having quit my day job corporate America, moved out of that to doing my bliss and my dharma. So I healed my old wound of thinking that I had to fit into a box that wasn't me. And you know, you know, if you show up here that I'm not always, I say 1030, but I'm not boom on 1030. That is not part of my bio rhythm. So I needed to feed my soul and Stop pretending after all those years, stop pretending that I could actually do that. And I attended, so I stopped tending to this idea of doing something that was not in my, it wasn't a priority. You know, it's not a priority to me to be somewhere at nine o'clock in the morning, or I was a nurse, so I was being somewhere at seven o'clock in the morning. And honestly, I think if you're in the hospital healing, I was a nurse in the hospital, why are you getting up at 7 o'clock in the morning? And as a matter of fact, why are they there at 5 o'clock in the morning put a thermometer? Well, they don't have those anymore. <laughs> so anyway, that didn't work for me. So I stopped pretending, I stopped attending to something that wasn't me, it wasn't in alignment with who I am. And you can see that, you know, I didn't show up here bang on 1030. I even left you a little note, hey Meg, saying, I'm not going to be, I'm going to be five minutes. So find out, attend to yourself, which means get to know yourself. So the first card that we looked at months, months, yeah, months ago, was this new beginning. So use the heat of this summer to really get to know yourself. Like, you know, are you good at that? And lots of people are, and kudos to them. I love that. I love that someone gets up and opens up a shop or gets up and makes coffee. I adore that. Not me. That is not me. So, then we come, after we get this new beginning, then we come to the magician, so which says, like I was talking about, to the sage, we add fire, to the element of earth, we add the element of fire, and we create smoke. That's an alchemical process. So once you have a new beginning, you really want to feed that new beginning, and then use everything in your power, the air, the earth, the fire, the water. <laughs> hey, Lorene, thanks for the love to really attend, and then you've got to tend. 
Um, and you've got to take care of this new dream that you've got. You know, when my new dream was to quit my day job um, and then follow my bliss, my bliss didn't show up the next day. I had cultivated it. I had pretended it. I had attended it to it and then I could tend it. I could sever this thing that doesn't work. Now this is me. I'm not suggesting you all go out there and quit your day job unless it's on your heart to do that. And then yes, let's all celebrate doing that and finding our own way. So attend to things ahead of time. Pretend them. Because when you do that, when you take that focus and you pretend, it expands, right? We know that. We know that as you focus, <laughs> what you focus on um, expands. So, so the magician uses the air, the earth, the fire, the water, and then along comes the high priestess. And she puts her foot on her emotions, allowing them to flow. She uses the wisdom of the Torah here, attached, connected deeply to her heart and using the earth. She follows the earth, the lunar cycle, the 28 days. And long, long time ago, the calendar marking the months used to follow that lunar calendar until... Pope Gregory decided that there ought to be a different calendar. So now we have the Gregorian calendar. Some months have 31 days. I mean, the moon had it all figured out, right? 28 days, new start. 28 days, new start. 28 days, new start. But along comes humankind, mankind, and says, oh, let's make it like this. Let's make it like that. And it has nothing to do with Mother Nature. So um, let's attend to Mother Nature. You know, so I was talking about in June, I was anticipating my um, my birthday. And then the, July is kind of like cultivating and t attending. And then I get to celebrate 24 years in August, 24 years since I quit my day job. So this July is about tending to things. So what are you going to tend to? And when you do, you become the empress. The empress is fecund. She's pregnant with possibilities. She's the one that does charitable work, attending. She's the one that builds hospitals. She's the archetype in us, in every one of us, whether we ignore it or not, that says, oh, let me help you. Oh, let me help you. And then along comes her, her husband, the emperor, and says, I'll go to battle for you. Because that balance of let me help you and I will be your crusader, I will be on your side, it requires the balance of the feminine and the masculine. So the emperor here is all about um, knowing when to bite and when to growl. And you think about dogs, you know, you get that first growl, you ought to beware, but some people don't. They just keep moving forward. So then the, then the dog needs to bite them to tell them to get out of the way. So the Hierophant, the next card after the emperor who knows when to bite and when to growl, is knowing that you have all the keys. You have all the keys. And the Hierophant here is really about writing your own story. And if you've done work with me, what you know is that I say, write your old story. Write your old story. It can be a great old story. It doesn't matter. It's just your old story. So the Hierophant is about having all the keys. And then we come to the lovers, which is about bringing it into balance. And just minutes ago, I talked about getting an idea and then if passing it through your heart. If it has heart and meaning for you, then you're going to take an action on it. And then let's look at today's card. So God is all the way up to taking that action. But look at this guy. His head is in the clouds. His feet are not on the ground. His two beings that would carry him forward are in conflict. And he has no reins. So how far are you going to get if you're in conflict 
if you have no reins, if you haven't pretended to your dream, if maybe you don't even know that you have a dream. So the charioteer is all about resolving the conflict, taking the reins and moving yourself forward. So 24 years ago, um, about this time, I was preparing to go on my very first vision quest, my very first vision quest. I've been on um, a few dozen since then. So the first vision quest, I'm all ready. We're going out. There's going to be three days out on our own, only water. And um, I think I had a tarp. And after I came back from that, well, first of all, I was really like, uh, uh, this is big going out for three days by myself in the wilderness. I mean, there was base camp back there. Um, but what I learned, <laughs> what I learned is that you have resolve, right? You have an idea about how your life ought to be. <clears throat> Pardon me. And you have an idea about your lifestyle. So if your life and your lifestyle, now my lifestyle isn't being able to be somewhere fully functional at seven o'clock in the morning, not me, nine o'clock in the morning, not so much. <laughs> so I stopped doing what was soul sucking for me. I took the reins, just like the charioteer here who doesn't have any. I resolved the conflict. It took a while because the work that I was doing was deeply important. I was working as a, in an agency as a children and family therapist. That's deep, really important work. But the way that um, the container that I worked in allowed me to do it had nothing to do with nature and teaching people how to look for significators, indicators in life, had nothing to do with that. And so what I found was as I introduced the shamanic work that I was learning about over the course of the seven years that I was in that job, as I imbued that, I noticed that people got better, that their relationships smoothed out, that progress was made. And so I made a decision after my first vision quest, um, where they took, you know, in Vision Quest, you're meant to be sitting <laughs> in one area and that's it, you know. But my guides were like, no, we're going to go up. We're going to go up there. It was shale. It was slippery. It was a difficult climb. And I'm not good with heights. When I got up there, they said to me, okay, go to the edge. So I went toward the edge. And they're like, no, seriously, go to the edge. So I sat on my bottom and I scooched over to the edge. And they were like, so put your, put your legs over. And oh man, the amount of trust that you have in your guides when they get you to a place where you're nervous and uh, you're nervous. <laughs> and then they just encourage you. Like, okay, so just to your ankles. So I was like, okay, there goes my ankles over the edge. And then your knees. And so, you know, I'm breathing. I, my knees are over the edge. And they said, look down. So I looked down and there was this winding little uh, creek down there. And they said, your life is like that. Other people's life is like this, like the edge of that picture right there. But that's not your life. Your life winds and twists and goes into amazing nooks and crannies. That's your life. So I said, thank you. I backed away from the edge and went back down to where I was, um, where I was camped out for the three days. And by the time I was done, all that I could do was go back well, first of all, when I got back and I went to go to work, I couldn't. My, I was all bent over. I couldn't stand up. So I went, hmm, what is my back? What is that all about? Well, your back is about being able to lean into something, right? Support, keeping you upright, moving forward. But that wasn't what I had at my work. And, um, and it was... It also wasn't in alignment with my new spiritual beliefs. So, hand stand up, 
And um, I take the rest of that week off to recover. And what I realize that all I can do is walk in the door and hand in my resignation. So three weeks after my first vision quest, I was out the door. And next month, I'm celebrating 24 years, 24 years, 24 years. Uh, just makes me, it makes me want to cry with joy about the freedom that you can allow yourself. That you, when you pretend something, when you set the goal out there, when you set out the desired lifestyle, when you decide to heal your old wounds, find your joy, your passion, your bliss, and share your gifts. So <clears throat> I quit my day job three weeks after my first vision quest, and I didn't have a clue what I was going to do. You don't need to know. Like the first card, the, the fool, let me see if I can just grab it here and we'll make this relevant to the tarot as well. Okay, there's the fool. See where his eyes are? They are not looking down. They're not looking down. He is looking for divine guidance. <clears throat> so when you pretend something, you're tapping in to the collective consciousness. You're tapping into divine guidance. And you ask, what's right, true, and beautiful for me? Well, what was right, true, and beautiful for me then was to beat feet out of there. So three weeks later, I had a party. I left that job. And people there told me that that was the best going away party that they ever attended. And lots of people were going away. I mean, you know, agencies have a lot of transitions in them because it's difficult work. <clears throat> so armed with that, <laughs> with this knowing, this deep knowing that, you know, this I can't see this little box here, not me. Um, but see this bigger box here, me. So when you discover things about yourself, don't push them away, embrace them. I am not a person who can live by the clock. It just doesn't fit me. <clears throat> the idea of doing psychotherapy with somebody and you get to that 55 minutes and you say, well, thank you very much for coming today and we'll pick up here next time. That just hurt my heart. So my, my sessions have always been an hour and a half because it's enough time to get into the juiciness of it and to move towards your freedom. Because you know, when we're in therapy, when we're wanting help for something, it's because something was locked in. We're not free from it. So this is where the charioteer comes in. Resolve the conflict. Resolve your conflict. Whatever your conflict is. Do I want coffee? Do I want tea? That can be an internal conflict. And it doesn't have to start with something huge. Start with small things. You know, when I was doing parenting with, um, with my clients, I would say, you can't say to your child, what do you want to eat? Say to your child, do you want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or do you want a cheese sandwich? Say the same things to yourself. Two options, this or that. And then make a choice and move in that direction. Don't waffle, don't wobble. And if that direction isn't the one that fits you, if you go over there and you decide, if I move over here and I decide that's not right for me, I get to move back. There's, you know, don't... um do allow yourself some choices, and if that choice doesn't work out, make another choice. Just choose again. So this is what the charioteer says. Resolve the conflict. I'll show you one more time. Resolve the conflict. Take the reins. Use your lofty ideas and ground them, which means put them into action. So there you go. Um, this is a month for me where I'm tending. You know, I've planted the seeds. I've pretended. 
you know, I tended to my garden. I got, I have a new strawberry bed this year and I um, tended to that. I dug it all up. I pulled the weeds out. I took the strawberry plants and I put them in there. That's all of the pretending. And then once they're ten once they're tended to, then I need to attend to them, which means I gotta water them, I gotta feed them, I gotta keep on pu pulling those weeds out because the thing about about life on planet Earth, it loves to flourish. So allow yourself that ability to resolve the conflict, take the reins, ground yourself by feeling your feet on the floor and allowing yourself to have your body and your mind in the clouds. One of my mentors who has crossed over now, now, her name is Angela's Arian. She said, with my feet on the ground and my long, tall body, with my mind in the clouds. And so um, even if you're like me and you have not such a long, tall body, you still can do that. You can still feel the ground. You can feel your heart drawing you towards things. Your mind is in the clouds creating in the element of air. So thank you for being here today. I appreciate you. And I love that you've put your foot on the path because the next thing to do is like the fool take the next step. All right. Happy July, everyone. And I will see you next time around, <laughs> next time, next week around this time. And in the meantime, be blissful. Find one thing today that you can bring joy into your life with, whether it's a cup of coffee, whether it's an Italian soda, just discovered Italian sodas, or whether it's a walk on the beach, or whether it's a smelling a flower. Do one thing for yourself today. Resolve the conflict. Know that you're worth it, even if it means quitting your day job, that you're worth it, and that a way is always found, even if you don't know what it is. So, Namaste, a whole blessings, but let's do this first. Okay, energize your hands. Make sure you're not going to bump into anything. Turn your palms toward your face. Hook your thumbs. Touch yourself. Nice. Here we go. I open fully to give, accept, and receive all that the universe has for me. I open fully to give, whoops, <laughs> to give, accept, and receive all that the universe has for me. One more time. I open fully to give, accept, big bowls with your hands so you can accept as much as you can, and receive, put it in your heart, all that the universe has for me. All right, namaste, aho, bliss, pretend, attend, intend, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a fabulous week.